Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in again to another episode of CivilianTacticalWeapons.com. Uh, before I actually start this episode, I want everyone to be clear that uh, this is not a video to try to make me sound like a chauvinist or anything. Um, this is actually just a video of observations I've made at various uh, gun ranges and people I've taken to the range. So what I want to do is actually just kind of cover, um, a lot of you guys out there may be considering taking your girlfriends or wives uh, or even daughters to the range to take them to shoot. Um, a lot of people don't really take into a uh, thought ahead of time of what uh, you know you need to actually do to have an effective day at the range. So uh, I want to actually just kind of cover a few things. Um, one is actually clothing attire. Um, if a woman's going to the range, uh, make sure that she has a button up front. Um, I can't tell you the countless amount of times I've taken women to the range and uh, hot shell casings uh, hitting your breasts is not a fun thing, uh, actually, especially if they go between your breasts, which I've actually seen too. Um, secondly, uh, you have to also think about uh, makeup. Uh, you don't want to really wear any makeup going to the gun range. Uh, keep this in mind, you're going to have a lot of gunpowder getting discharged from the firearms over the course of the, the, you know, the day at the range. Um, the other thing you're going to have is if it's enclosed, uh, there's gunpowder constantly floating around. You're going to clog all your pores anyways, so if you have uh, makeup on and you have that going into your pores and stuff, uh, that's also a problem. Um, secondly, shoes. Uh, you want to wear flat shoes that are uh, completely enclosed, uh, no open, uh, open-toed type shoes or whatever. Uh, remember, the you know, same thing like I was talking about before. Um, the hot shell casings can hurt uh, if they hit your body. It's not a real big deal. I'm used to it, but uh, if it's a tiny, kind of your first time thing, um, what you don't want is, and I have seen it before, is a sh hot shell casing falling at shooting out of the gun, uh, hitting a woman in the foot, and then uh, as you're going down the range, the uh, barrel automatically starts uh, moving when uh, a, a woman may kind of freak out the first time it happens. So. Uh, those are a couple things covering a tire. Um, second thing, now we're actually talking about uh, uh, positioning. You have to stress, um, and what you have to do is make sure you explain to a woman ahead of time that, uh, and this this particular, I wouldn't even say this is for a woman, this would be pretty much anyone. Um, I've seen guys make this mistake too, is uh, if you have a person at the range, um, something inadvertently could happen, um, depending on what type of gun you have to shoot, if you're renting a gun at the range, Keep in mind, anytime you're renting a gun at the range, you're kind of rolling a tra crap shoot on how reliable that gun is. Um, I wouldn't use that as you know to do a test as far as you know is the gun reliable or not. Um, that's not always a, a good show. Um, some ranges maintain their guns better than others. Um, some may never even clean their guns. Um, so what you need to go ahead and understand is when someone's out there at the range, um, they could have some form of a malfunction. So you know maybe they have a, a stove pipe in the in the chamber, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, I have seen so many people sit there and turn and go, there's something wrong. Um, you need to make sure with complete clarity that the barrel never uh, turns towards you. Uh, I had a woman say, well, I fired the last bullet from the gun, so it's empty. You know, what's the big deal? Um, I think any of you out there who watch my videos kind of or know anything about guns understand that there is a big deal if the gun's empty. Um, the perception of a gun being empty versus a full verification of the gun being empty are two different things. Um, secondly, even if a gun is empty, you still don't want to ever point it at anyone. So you went at the range, what you have to make sure they understand is if anything happens, you put the gun down straight down with the barrel pointing down range at the, at the, gun, sh at the gun range. So make sure that it's highly stressed. Um, there's a very high chance that this is a person's first time shoot that something's going to happen that's going to uh, freak them out and they need to know to you know, just put the gun down the table and walk away. Um, it's perfectly fine. It's a really safe and uh, I can't tell you how many times I've been sitting next to someone at the range and uh, uh, Had someone uh, you know had a gun pulled on me I, I, I like to say um, even though it's just someone uh, just spinning the gun over because either one they want to talk Which is another thing also make sure that you understand that it's very reaction Reactionary for people to sit there if you're talking to turn to talk to you So if you're gonna turn and talk and you still have the gun pointed at them um, that's not a good thing. So what I want to do is just make sure that we cover those types of things. The other thing too is uh, you may want to be very careful. Um, I actually recommend that you stay behind the per directly behind the person and let them fire a few rounds off. Um, sometimes even the noise of the gun may throw them off a bit um, and that can cause kind of some form of a knee-jerk reaction. So 
Uh, remember, if it's someone's first time at the range, you just need to be uh, very patient and uh, work with them. Make sure that before you go to the range, you have taken the gun out at home. Um, describe the full operations of the gun, how the gun's loaded, uh, shot and everything. Because keep in mind, if there's a lot of uh, stuff going on at the range, um, they may kind of tune out with all the gunfire and stuff going on around them at the range that they won't actually hear your instructions. So what you want to do is make sure you have that discussion prior to going into the range. I recommend you do it at home and then possibly uh, what I like to do is one time right before you go into the back area where you shoot to have the discussion one more time uh, in the uh, general area. So with that being said, if you have any questions, please email me at info at civiliantacticalweapons.com and I hope the, this video is useful to you and I hope to see you in a future episode. Thank you.